Hello, and welcome to another chapter of a tome pulled right off the shelves at the heart of the Jackals. As always, I'm your skilled host, Lothran, and there's ever so much more data to relay. So let's get to it, shall we? Go grab a filling meal, settle into a cozy spot, and pay accurate attention to Fleet Part 67, Oddity. Hey boss! Hey, hey! Hey boss! I think I got something here. I, I got it all collected up. Thorin called out to Alduin as he lit himself a domey. Alduin leaned his head out of a small wash closet. He was just finishing up his shaving. He had too many scars to let his spotty beard ever take over his face. He found something. Well, um, I'm not exactly sure. Thorin began shuffling the pads and papers to make sure he had all his evidence ready for proper inspection. But, um, it looks pretty weird on its own, you know. Alduin wiped off his face, throwing a shirt back on. Okay, show me what you got, kid. Alduin marched over to Thorin's desk and the whiteboard behind it. Okay, boss, uh, you can see the numbers here and, and then I got the charts over here. And uh, what is it? <sighs> No, 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 kid. Uh, below my pay grade. Use the board and just talk while you write. I'm more of a listener than a watcher. Okay. Uh, Thorin stood up, screeching his chair across the floor so he could reach the board and begin describing what he'd found. Alduin leaned on a file cabinet while smoking a cool, refreshing domey, his eyes shut to the world around him. So it took some digging, but both the Digra farm and the mines had very similar reports of accidents, always related to excavating a new cave. It's just a coincidence. Thorin cast a baleful look toward Alduin, and Alduin smiled because of it. It's what he was expecting. That's what they'll say. The bosses, whoever ours is, they make sure everyone thinks it's just happenstance. We gotta prove it ain't. That's the job for us, kid. Alduin continued to enjoy his oddly shaped cigarette. Okay, that's what I figured. So I went back down to records on my own. It was a lot simpler the second time around. When I got there, I poured over the records for all of the departments. Only the ones that have to mine out areas exhibit a trait that can't be a coincidence. Thorin nodded as he spoke each word and wrote the numbers, as if to reassure himself what he was saying was true. See, the mining each week, there's a... Each week there's an accident. In the same tunnel, when the work is halted for safety inspections, there's between one and four more accidents. Most of the bodies found were freshly killed, but a few seemed like they had been frozen and then thawed out afterward. It's always about money and pressure, kid. Now we just gotta figure out where the money's going and who's applying the pressure. I looked into a bit of that too. I went as far back as I could think of. Um, the pattern on the mining operations was limited for two months, but then the amputees arrived and the pattern increased. This is when the deaths go up to as much as four in a week, sometimes more depending on how many tunnels are being worked on. So all these deaths, the extra ones, they were happening before the mangled veterans arrived. That's interesting. I wonder why... Hmm. Did you find out when the skirts started going underground, kid? Uh, not yet, boss. Uh, I'm still working on it. There's a little more of the accidents to go over. Oddly enough, in my research, uh, Weapons Department, C&D Division, Main Ops, Central Power, and Hangar have accidents frequently, but no repeat accidents. What sort of numbers of accidents are we talking about? You know, uh, the, re the repeats and all that. How many people are dead? Well, that's tough to say, boss. Um, there's a lot of missing people factored into this. Uh, some, of, A bunch of them could have just run off. I, I don't know. I'm just basing it on the people that would most likely be in those areas. Um, and with the 
Sometimes with the cave-ins and collapses, they're so dangerous, they don't find the bodies till much later, on account of having to shore up the tunnels and, and before they go back in and all that. Um, my rough estimate is that there's between 60 and 100 or so people that have been killed off in this fashion. 60 to 100? It, it may not seem like a lot compared to the 3,000 or so of soldiers and engineers Men and women, and starting to be some children now on Strife 1. But it was the most amount of people Alduin had ever been responsible for figuring out how they died and who killed them. He could barely even fathom why someone would kill so many people for... Money? What was the point of this? One question was really on his mind. Do they find any dames in the tunnels? What about that? No boss, just men in the tunnels. And women really aren't supposed to be out there. See, now, that's odd. Azazo would have to be killing some women. Where would the Zazo be putting them? Odd, maybe, maybe this Zazo doesn't want to kill women. I mean, there's still plenty of them missing that nobody nobody knows where any of them are, but what if, what if he's just keeping them somewhere? No, no, there'd have to be some, at least a handful of strong-headed women that won't listen to reason. There's always plenty of them. <sighs> Something's weird about this. We have to change tax on this for a while, kid. Uh, go over fresh ground, that sort of thing. Uh, I gotta hit the streets and the tunnels, and you gotta get back to the main records. Ah, man, I was afraid you were gonna say that. I do not like going down to that place. Exactly. No one likes going to that place. That's why it's your job and not mine. I gotta go out and learn the lay of the land. Create a map in my head so I don't get lost next time I have to chase a guy. All right, you know what to do. I'm gonna be out a couple hours. If you get back before me, make sure to lock the door and remember which knock is which. I remember, boss. Thorin made sure to tap out the pattern in midair so that he didn't give away the sound to anyone who might be listening. And also whispered the password so that Alduin could witness that he did in fact remember it. And so it is. Our time together has once more come to a close. I hope each and every one of you enjoyed the tale as much as I have the telling of it. As always, I've been your dedicated host, Lothrin, and this was Fleet Part 67, Oddity, another tale right from the heart of the jackals. And now, sadly, ever so sadly, we must once again part ways. Korvoth, guide them back along the proper path. Back to the safety they know all too well. Yes, sir, Lothrin. Some good info for the ears tonight. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Back to work. A pleasant greeting and a fond farewell to each and all. Please leave all your comments, questions, and kindnesses down below. Don't you let me catch a single one of you leaving any of that nasty, rude, or terrible stuff, though. You keep all that malarkey to yourselves, I got it. Don't you do it, not once, not never. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to help us learn, spread, and grow. And don't forget that we strongly encourage each and every one of you to stay safe out there. See you again tomorrow for Fleet Part 68. Hmm, a little bit to think about with this episode. Good night and good luck. You'll need it. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. See you again.